Hello guys and welcome back to another locomotive review and today we have my brand new Backman 94 double X. So this locomotive was given to me by my good friend Kelly Ashford who joined me on the 17th to bring some of our locos down but she also bought the 94 double X so at the time of recording it's a day old and it is brand new, it's, it had never been round or anything, it has now and had a bit of a run in stuff so it's all running perfectly well. Um, so you've got the box behind us now, let's have a look what's diddling on the back. So that's all the history of the 94 XX. There you go. Authentically detailed model, blah blah blah, and then that, and that, in case you want to search it. Inside the box you can see you have a pair of etched 9402 nameplates and instructions. So let me just grab those, pop those there. So here you go, here you can see the other bits and bobs that you may need. Now you can see the motor type, it is cordless, it's a very good cordless motor though. Uh, however I have had to set up a different controller to run this because I usually use the HM2000 which is a feedback controller. And callless motors do not work with feedback, so I've got a non-feedback controller to run it on, and it runs absolutely brilliantly, as you'll see later. And you also have the firebox glow, so I'll try and get that on camera if possible. For bits and bobs. There you go. So, what we're going to do is run through the detail of the 94 X, and then I'm going to run it and give my verdicts and stuff. So here it is then, the 94 double X up close and personal. So I'm going to run through this now. This is an absolutely beautiful locomotive and I absolutely love this thing. Um, it's stunning. Now can I just say the weight is incredible. It weighs just under 300 gram. So it's a heavy beast and it's especially heavy for a tank engine. It's not that it's heavy full stop, it's just incredible for a tank engine of this size, being an 060. And it is lovely. Obviously, you do have the Great Western Green uh, with the lovely Great Western lettering. It's printed on very nicely. I'll try and get a close-up of that. You've got the 9402 there, printed nicely. And then this C, which is, who knows what that means. Um, yeah, that's it for lining. Uh, doesn't really have any, but you do have like the little bits and bobs on here. Now, this running plate is a massive, thick die cast. Uh, running plate and you've also got a really heavy chassis as well Which is where all the, most of the weight comes from the body itself. I uh, I would say is plastic. However, it is Very very strong and it's build quality is brilliant on this thing um, I would definitely recommend getting yourself one of these if you're liking this so far now. I do like this Copper top chimney you can see it's quite hot and sunny today in the UK um, and you can see how how much the Top of the chimney shines like it's beautiful. Uh, the little whistles aren't made of the same sort of material, so they don't really shine much. However, they this they are tiny, so it would be very difficult for them to do that. Right, separately fitted detail then. So you do have obviously the metal spring buffers at the front, and you have those at the back. You've got separately fitted lamp irons. You do have lovely separately fitted uh, smoke box door handle. Um, you've got the metal handrail all the way. Around the front of the loco. You do have some on the side as well, on the side of the tanks, as well as there, there, and on the other side. You've got these lovely water tanks which are nicely applied. You have the nicely molded um, safety valve bonnet, uh, safety valve bonnet, basically. Um, then you've got lots of other bits and bobs, including these lovely glazed windows. On both sides, got some handrails on the top, and then you have some there as well. It's like everywhere. Underneath, you do have a representation of valve gear with all the piping and stuff. It does look very good under there. It's not just a blank space, which is obviously a very good thing. It's incredible how much of this loco is actually exposed. Like the majority of the loco, like there's no. There's like no like motor block underneath of here or anything. It's incredible how 
gets into such tight space and it must power the rear axle because otherwise that's a crazy piece of engineering they'll want to know how that works <laughs> basically uh, it is lovely though and i like the fact that it's nice and open underneath it's lovely it makes it look so cool and then obviously this bit's exposed as well like it's floating in midair the smoke box it's crazy Anyway, more bits and there's like lots of stuff to be detail, which separately fitted detail, which we can all see under there. Obviously, you've got some nice moulded detail around here, around the splashes and stuff. Uh, you've got some more piping along here. Got the steps, which are nicely represented. Then you have the cab, which is very difficult to see, but they've put a lot of effort into it. You have the nice sort of brown wooden effect. Well, it's almost like wooden effect, isn't it, being that colour? You have the nice separately painted floor. There's the back of the cab. The etched win uh, with the glazed windows as well. More handrails along the back, and lots of all of that there. And you have those at the top there with the coal bunkers. You have a nice, sort of fine, realistic, yet shiny coal. It's very nice. I don't know whether that's removable, I would think it is, but who knows. And then you have the grill effect on the rear windows, which is very nice. I have the, obviously you've got the vacuum pipes, which are separately fitted, front and back. You've also got the spring buffers again at the back, as well as some steps on either side. So obviously I'm not going to go into too much detail, otherwise it could be quite a lengthy video. So much stuff like this. Incredibly detailed locomotive for its size as well. But I think it's time for us to get this onto the track and see how it performs. So here it is then, Backman's beautiful 94 double X tank engine. And oh, what can I say? Apart from this is an absolutely stunning loco. And Backman, you deserve a pat on the back for this one. Uh, the detail is incredible. It's lovely quality and... It's basically just now a test of how this performs before we come to a final verdict. But I am liking this one. I don't, is it, well, basically this is my first super detailed Great Western Tank Engine. Because my other Great Western Tank Engine, the 61 double X, is an old mainline one. It's a bit discoloured and it's a bit naff. So, it's nice to finally have a slightly different Great Western logo, a tank engine for starters. But a nice pannier and an actual tank engine that I can use all of the time, basically. Uh, but like the 61 double X, it's incredibly powerful, inc and this is probably heavier than my Prairie tank, um, my 61 double X. So I'm going to pop some coaches on in a bit uh, to run this with, uh, and then we're going to uh, run another loco with it. So let's see what it performs. Like. So we're going to do some slow speed testing. Let's focus on those wheels. Now I'm using a non-feedback control, which actually has a setting on it where well, it doesn't really that the control is actually off. It does cog a little bit. But come on. There is some torque there, though. It's not stopping dead. It's dead on the points there. Where are you going? There you go. It is super smooth though and dead quiet. It does cog a little bit going forwards, but I actually can't get it any slower than that, unfortunately. See the firebox glow there as well. There you go. There you go, so that will do us now. Obviously, I can't get it any slower than that on my old controller. Now, when I eventually get a nice, new, shiny, non-feedback controller, it 
it'll probably perform better. But I can tell you it is a very good runner. Um, and I do recommend getting one of these. So, without further ado, let's attach some coaches and get a loco of similar size to run with it on the other line. Uh, and let, well, let's get to it. So, the 94 double X is joined by the LNER J50. Now, this is, well, this was my first super detailed tank engine, my actual first super detailed premium locomotive, and is very similar to the 94XX in the fact that it's super detailed, incredibly heavy, incredibly powerful, uh, a lot of it is made of die cast, and is just a genuinely all round brilliant loco. Now, the 94XX is hooked up to some gorgeous um, chocolate and cream coaches. And then we have the J50 with a small mixed goods, which is going to set off for us in a second. Uh, so we are going to... Well, I'm going to set the J50 off first, actually. Oh, it's going the wrong way. There we go. Nice and slowly. And now for the 94XX. Wrong way. See that firebox glow there, can't you? There's the J50. Much older model, but still an absolute beauty. One of Hornby's best 060s. Um, obviously this is the LNER unlined black, but you could get a lined one that also looks beautiful. Uh, they are also available for a lot, lot less than the 94XXs. Um, I believe the RRP is around 125-ish for the 94XX, however I would actually say it's worth that because I like mine so much, it's growing on me but day by day, um, more and more so. But the J50 is brilliant, don't get me wrong, but the 94XX is also fabulous and it's super quiet it does sometimes cut out a little bit on the point but these wheels probably aren't the cleanest so and they're points after all there's a j50 very late great western loco this um, whereas the j50 is a lot older um, in terms of when it was built and stuff. They did survive a long time, the J50s, however, none are preserved, where I think there's two 94 double X's in preservation. Uh, so, mine, unfortunately, isn't one of the preserved examples. Um, but knowing how much I like these now, I'm uh, definitely hoping to get another one in the future to get a preserved one. So... I get more than two, who knows? Anyway, J50, and it is with a nice mixed freight. It is a freight locomotive after all, classified as a 4F, which is a strong loco. And here's the lovely 94 double X with a set of three Batman coaches, so it's matching. watch these go around all day, especially the 94, because it's just so quiet and smooth. Um, it's, it's lovely, to be honest. And the thing is, it's got a quality mechanism as well, and like some more expensive Batman Locos. At home, Truro, your mechanism is far inferior, but you are beautiful nonetheless. Update on City Truro. Uh, Kelly Ashford did also provide me with these beautiful coaches, which I'm going to do a review of very soon. Uh, they are for Truro specifically, um, but obviously the 28 double X being also pre grouping could also hold these, I think. So would be nice to see those in a video, definitely coming soon. Um, anyway, let's get back to the 94 double X, who keeps stopping on the points annoyingly.
Sometimes does it and sometimes doesn't. Hmm. Oh well. It's just points, isn't it? They clean the track. The track should be clean, but I think it's getting a bit mucky again. It's not too bad at the minute. If you didn't do it then, it must be fine. Yeah. Oh well. It's a good loco nonetheless. So, doesn't affect me. Um, doesn't affect the loco either. It's just, sometimes it jumps a little bit, but... No, it's a fabulous loco, and those coaches match perfectly with it now. So I'm going to be using these coaches a lot more often as well. <laughs> Who knew? But they're perfect for it. But when the 94's coming, it's so quiet, crazy. And you do get a glimpse of firebox glow when it goes past as well. It is quite bright. Okay, so stop you, Mr. J50. And then let's stop the lovely 94 X. It died in the points, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, bring it back a little bit. There you go. So, I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video today. I certainly have enjoyed making it because I really, really, really like this 94 double X. I like it a lot more than I expected to. I like them anyway. I think they're quite unique. They started growing on me a lot more recently. Um, but I like it a lot more than I do just because it's a quality model as well. It's just brilliant it, as a model. So, I'm happy with it, um, the issues of having a callless motor doesn't matter anymore because I've got a good controller for it, I will be getting more controllers in the future in order to expand the collection so it doesn't really matter, all I've got to do is update the actual shelving because I haven't got much space um, but I'll, I'll definitely try something out with that because um, yeah, move some lurkers along. Anyway, um, I do hope you have enjoyed watching this video today, guys. Um, I hope you all uh, like the 94 double X. Um, I certainly do. And until next time, I will see you very soon for some more. Uh, I'll see you soon for some more videos. But make sure to subscribe, put that notification bell on. Uh, take care of yourselves as well, obviously. Uh, take care of yourselves. That's important. I don't want you all like get like I don't want stuff happening to you guys, obviously. Um, and until next time, I'll see you very, very soon. Goodbye.